about a third of the time in the 19th century, the vice presidency was just empty. Nobody filled it. When it became empty, nobody thought to fill it. You had these men who at the time were the most famous people in the country, or, or at least the second most famous person in the country. There were large celebrations in their honor, there were dinners in their honor, people gave speeches about them. They were just at the top of the political ladder, and now they are completely forgotten. The office was ridiculed from the time it was first proposed. Benjamin Franklin proposed the title of His Superfluous Excellency. And from then on, people have made fun of the vice president. It's almost as if the founding fathers were producing a movie and decided that they needed some element of comic relief. The vice president has always been the comic relief in our government. For 13,795 days, a total of 38 years, the executive branch has been without an officer next in line for the presidency. Yet the office of the president has always seemed to operate relatively smoothly, even with the absence of a vice president. During much of the 1800s, uh, there were several cases where vice presidents died. Uh, often the office was given as a political reward for someone who had served in the party for many years. He's sometimes chosen for geographical balance or ideological balance. There were presidents who died while in office and the vice president would move into the presidency. And so there were a lot of times when there was a vacancy in the vice presidency and it was never filled. Well, we've had a lot of awful ones along the way. Take Hannibal Hamlin. It's been said that there's been more written about the Civil War than about the rest of our history combined. Those four years. And you think about the people in the Civil War, Joe Hooker, you know, gave the term for prostitutes, General Burnside, and from him we get the term sideburns. So even if you don't know their names, and most people know Lee and Grant and all the people involved, you know all of this about the Civil War. And here was the Vice President who served under Lincoln, and nobody has heard about Hannibal Hamlin. And there's a terrific reason for that. He went home to Maine during the Civil War. He didn't enter into any of the battles. He wasn't in Washington trying to further the war effort. He went home to Maine, and I suspect that guilt got the best of him, and he decided to join the Maine Coast Guard. He was given the rank of private, and he spent his first few weeks peeling potatoes. So here you had the Vice President of the United States in a kitchen peeling potatoes. We were in a Civil War. A lot of people wanted to kill the President, but if Lincoln had died during that time, Hannibal Hamlin would have gone from being private to commander-in-chief. It would have been the biggest promotion in the history of the world. But by and large, you know, traditionally the vice president is, he was picked as vice president because he could stand in when needed for the president. That's pretty simple. So he's got to be a man of some qualities or else he wouldn't be picked. It was in 1844, Silas Wright of New York was selected to run, and they decided to tell him of his nomination using the telegraph. So they sent the message down, and his answer came back and said no. They did it again, the answer came back no. So they sent some of the delegates down to Washington to tell him, and he refused in person. Our delegates are not idiots, the conventions. They know perfectly well what it's all about. One of the delegates said, what about my brother-in-law? So they show up at the door of George Dallas, and he thinks they're a bunch of drunks and he gets a shotgun and tries to chase them away. And finally it was straightened out that, that uh, he was the vice presidential nominee. 